Welcome in this video, and here is our first example on how to work out the mean for grouped data. So we're going to work out the mean, median, and the mode for a given set of data. We have a table here which we are supposed to use to analyze. And you have to note that in this data we have classes, we have the column for frequency, we have the column for x, we have for the column for fx, and we also have the column for what we call cumulative frequency. That one is the first time we are mentioning it, and we are going to show you how to do that. So all these are the all, all these are the values that we need for us to calculate the mean. For us to calculate the mean, or what we call the x bar. Sometimes in some books you can find it written as x bar. We are also supposed to work out the class model class, and we are supposed to also state the model frequency at the end we're going to also do the median of such a data so how do we proceed so for us to work out the mean first of all we need to write a formula for finding the mean down so to find the mean then we need the summation of fx so this is x bar is equals to summation of fx divided by the summation of f so we need the column for x to be filled and the summation for fx to be filled. For us to do that, I need a calculator. So this is my calculator. The first thing we are going to do is to fill x. And we said x is the midpoint. So the midpoint of the classes. So if you work out the midpoint, the first one is going to be 10 plus 1, that is 11, divided by 2, that's going to be 5.5. We are going to add 20 plus plus 11 and that is that one 31 divided by 2 is 15.5 we can also add 30 plus 21 and that is 50 50 divided by 2 is 25.5 we are also going to add uh, 31 plus 40 divided by 2 that's going to be 35.5 and finally we have 41 plus uh, 50 divided by 2, that is 45.5. So this is the column for x, which we define it as the midpoint of each class. Now, we are also supposed to work out the midpoint. The midpoint or the fx, the product of the frequency and the midpoint. So the first one is going to be 5.5 multiplied by 16. So 5.5 multiplied by 16, that's 88. The second one is going to be 15.5 multiplied that by 14, which is the frequency, 217. The next one is 28 multiplied by 25.5 as 714. The next one is 35.5 multiplied that by its frequency, that is 12, that is going to be 426. And finally, we have 45.5 multiplied by 4, and that is 182. So the next thing we are supposed to do from our formula, we notice that we are going to find the summation of fx divided by the summation of f. So the summation of fx here is going to be equal to, we are going to sum all the fx's. That's going to be 182 plus 426 plus 714, then 217. We add that to 88. At the end, we get uh, 1627. So the summation of fx is uh, 1627. 1627. And then we notice that we need the summation of f again. All the f's added are 16. Add that to 14. Add that to 28. Add that to 12. And finally, 4. So the summation of all the f's is 74. 74. Again, a quick check. That is 14 plus, that is 30. 30 add to 28. That is uh, 58. 58 add to uh, 12 is 70. 70 plus 4 is 74. So it is checked out. So that is 16. 27 and then the value of fx is 74 so for us to get the mean then we divide 16 27 divided by 74 and the answer is 
So 16, 27, divided by the answer, which is 74, we get 21.986 uh, that becomes the mean for our data right here all right we are also supposed to work out the model class uh, the model class is something that you can just uh, 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 see from the table because we said the model class is the class with the highest uh, frequency or the class with the highest frequency so by inspection we notice that the class with the highest frequency is 21 to 30 and that that is 21 to 30 and the model frequency is the highest frequency by inspection we notice that the highest frequency is 28 so the highest frequency is 28 so most of the time students are confused between the model class and the model frequency so the model class is the class that it has the highest frequency and the model frequency is the uh, frequency which is the highest or the most appearing items all right so we can talk about the median now and the formula for getting the median is given as follows so median can be given by l plus n over 2 minus c divided by f so since we know what all this means just to mention l is the lower limit of the median class n is the total frequency 2 is a constant c is the cumulative frequency above the median class f is the frequency of the class and i is the interval or what you call the class limit of the median class so the first thing we are supposed to do here is to identify the median class because we have so many classes here so which one are we going to pick as the median class as I told you, we are going to do a video to explain how you can find the median class, the first quartile or the upper quartile class, lower quartile class, the percentile class, the decile class, and all those. So we have a video exclusively for explaining such things. But in this case, we are going to simply uh, work out the median class. Okay. So how do we identify the median class? For us to identify the median class, first of all, we need to have the cumulative frequency um, column. So the cumulative frequency column is going to be, the first one is 16. The second one is going to be uh, 16 added to 14, that's going to be 30. 30 added to 28, that is 58. 58 added to 12 is 60 or 70, that is. And then 70 added to 4 is 74. And you notice the highest cumulative frequency is always the same as the total frequency. So that is uh, worth noting. So how do we find the uh, median class? For you to find the median class, this is how we do it. You see, this number here, n over 2, we said a is the total frequency. And if you divide the total frequency divided by 2, you notice you're going to get, uh, that is 74 divided by 2, that is 37. 37. And we need to know what C is. We said C is the cumulative frequency above the median class. So that means the value of C must be the minimum number that if we subtract from 37, it must not be a zero or a negative. That is the easiest way to identify the median class. So starting from the bottom, going upward, we are going to test each cumulative frequency and see which one is going to or which is the minimum value such that if we subtract it right at 37, it is not a negative or zero. So let's start. If you subtract 37 from 74, or if you subtract 74, if you subtract 37 from 74, that is going to be a negative value. If you sub, sorry, if you subtract 74 plus from 37, it's going to be a negative value. If you subtract uh, 70 from 34, from 37, you're going to get a negative value. Again, if you subtract 58 from 37, you notice again it's a negative value. But if you subtract 30 from 37, it's going to be a positive value. And now, we are going to take this class, this class, as the median class, this one. Why? Because we noticed the first number that 
uh, that satisfied our uh, what we wanted is 30 because if you take 37 minus 30 is 7 which is a positive number of course then we are going to take the class that is uh, next just next to it and that is the class 21 to uh, 30 again for you to identify the median class you use the cumulative frequency you take n over 2 just like what we have done uh, that is uh, 74 divided by 2 we got 37 and then you test 37 minus 74 a negative value 37 minus 70 a negative value 37 minus 58 a negative value but that 7 minus 30 is a positive value that means we are going to take the class uh, preceding uh, uh, this uh, cumulative frequency 30 and that class is 21 to 30 so for us to work out this then we're going to use the lower limit our lower limit is going to be 20.5 20.5 plus n is 74 divided by 2 and we subtract now the cumulative frequency above the median class which is going to be uh, 30 in this case divided by f the frequency of our median class and the frequency of our median class is 28 28 and we multiply that by i the i is the upper limit or upper class limit minus the lower class limit and if you check 30.5 minus 20.5 that's going to be 10. so very quick let's work out this so this is going to be 20.5 when we add that to, let me work uh, this out, 37 uh, minus 30 multiplied by 10 and we divide the answer by 28. The answer is 2.5, 2.5. I add, if I add it to 20.5, that is going to be, that is going to be 22 point, right? That's going to be 23, exactly 23. Yeah, so that becomes our median. Now you notice the median and the mean must be almost the same. They must never be uh, very far from each other. The moment you find them that they are far from each other or the one of them is so big or so too small, it means that your data is not normal. So you can judge from the data that you have the moment you have uh, a mean that is uh, very far from the median, then you notice that your data is not going to be normal. You can judge even from the performance of your students. If you calculate the median and you calculate the mean, and you notice they have a big difference, a huge difference, it means that the performance was not normal. Or the curve, if you draw the curve, it's either going to skew to the left or it's going to skew to the left, uh, to the right. So generally, that is how we work out the median or the mean and the model or frequency together with the uh, uh, model class. So this is the formula for finding the mean. This is the formula for finding the median. And that's how you identify the median class, the way we have just discussed. That's how we do it. Please remember to share this video, like, and also subscribe.